Good evening, everybody. Greetings from the Faculty of Pharmacy, Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, Bengaluru, India. I'm Sindhu Abraham, and I'm privileged to present my work entitled Nano Calcium Incorporated Dressings for Wound Care, carried out along with my colleagues Sharon Furtado and Bharat Srinivasan from MS Ramaya University of Applied Sciences. The contents of my presentation will be as follows. The background or the introduction, methodology of my work, the results, conclusions and references. Coming to the background of the work, wound healing is considered to be a calcium mediated process and a number of events occur after cutaneous injury resulting in tissue re repair. A number of cells, enzymes, cytokines, hormones and ions are involved in this process and calcium is considered to be one of the most important ions in this process. Beginning from the inflammatory to the maturation or the remodeling phase, calcium is involved in every step of the healing process. And this is the main reason why calcium based dressings have gained a lot of importance. So clinically, the direct topical application of calcium to chronic human wounds through calcium alginate dressings has shown to be very beneficial. And studies have also showed that the cell proliferation during wound healing can be mediated by the release of ionized calcium into the wound bed. Hence, by increasing the ionized calcium concentration in the wound bed, healing could be accelerated. Calcium oxide has shown potential in bone tissue engineering as well as in osteomyelitis treatment because of its osteogenic differentiating properties. It is also known to have good antibacterial and antifungal activity. So hence in this work we have considered calcium oxide as a precursor for a dressing material and since ionized calcium could enhance the healing nano calcium oxide was considered in order to have increased bioavailability so in the present study we have used nano calcium oxide in hydrocolide dressings these dressings are basically appropriate for non-infected wounds with low to moderate discharge and they contain a gel forming polymer and when in contact with the wound exudate these gels absorb the fluid and swell to form a jelly like substance which is then confined within the structure of the material the main objective of the research work is to develop nano calcium incorporated Hydrocolloid dressings containing nano calcium oxide for wound healing. Coming to the methodology, the formulation consisted as follows Nano calcium oxide was basically prepared by thermal decomposition method and was subsequently analyzed for its particle size by DLS. For the thermal decomposition method, we used calcium nitrate, which was heated in a muffle furnace at 450 degrees centigrade. And the solution was allowed to undergo complete combustion for 15 to 30 minutes for removal of the carbon content. And then the final product, that is nano calcium oxide was obtained. This nano calcium oxide was then subsequently used in the preparation of hydrocolloid dressings. The dressings were prepared by solvent casting technique as shown in the table highlighted. Three formulations were considered. All the three formulations contained 75 parts per million of nano calcium oxide and varying concentrations of micronized xanthan gum as well as HPMC K15M. 
glycerol was basically used to improve the flexibility of the dressing and citric acid was used as a cross-linking agent for zarthankar. The prepared dressings were then evaluated by different techniques. The particle size analysis of nanocalcium oxide was determined by dynamic light scattering method. The so surface morphology of the dressing was determined by scanning electron microscopy coupled with energy dispersive X-ray microanalysis. This method analyzes both the surface morphology and the elemental composition of the formulation. The pH of the formulation was determined using a digital pH meter. The thickness of the dressing was measured at different sides using a screw gauge. The folding endurance was carried out by repetitively folding the dressing at the same place manually and the number of times it could be folded without tearing was considered as the folding endurance. The tensile strength was measured using a universal testing machine according to ASTM D882-18 standards. The dressings were basically cut to dumbbell shaped strips placed in the groups of the universal tester and stretched until it cut. The expansion profile of the dressing was determined on a 4% weight by volume gelatin solution. This gelatin solution was poured into an individual petri dish allowed to cool to room temperature. The dressing was placed over the gelatin surface and the change in diameter of the dressing on absorption of water from the gelatin solution was recorded at predetermined time intervals. All these tests were performed in triplicates and the average was calculated to determine the ultimate value. Cell migration is considered to be important for the regeneration of damaged tissues and to assess the capability of the cells to migrate and to prove its wound healing activity. In vitro wound healing studies were carried out by scratch assay. Coming to the results, here are the results obtained from the evaluation studies. Nanocalcium oxide prepared by thermal decomposition was evaluated for its particle size and it was found to be 307.8 nanometer and the polydispersity index was found to be 0 0.245. The surface morphology of the dressing was determined by scanning electron microscopy as shown in the figure. The particles were found to be pleomorphic and the figure indicates the presence of nanocalcium oxide particles on the surface of the dressing. These are the evaluation parameters for the dressing. The thickness of the dressing basically influences the time required for the polymers to be absorbed into the body. And the thickness of all the dressings ranged from 0 0.46 to 0 0.42. Tensile strength and the elongation at break measures the ability of the film to withstand rupture and mechanical pressures. So wound dressings should possess optimum tensile strength as they are required to be durable and stress resistant for easy application and handling. And the tensile strength values range from 5.51 to 7.74. And formulation HD3, which contained equal amount of xanthan gum and HPMC, showed the highest thickness as well as the tensile strength. So the results indicate that the dressings, the mechanical strength of the dressings was sufficient to bear stress during application. Folding endurance means the flexibility needed for easy handling and secure application of the dressing. All the dressings had a folding endurance ranging from 292 to 300. So it means that it could be folded around 300 times without causing any tearing. 
So the values were found to increase with an increase in the concentration of HPMC, indicating good flexibility of the dressing. Wound healing is basically influenced by pH. And studies have shown that alkaline pH in the wound bed can create an unstable or an unsuitable environment for healing by encouraging bacteria. An acidic pH can hinder the growth of bacteria and reduce the activity of matrix metalloproteinases and improve tissue oxygenation. And this is a prerequisite for wound healing. So all the pH of the dress, the pH of all the dressings were measured, and it ranged from 5.13 to 5.8683. And the observations are in line with studies demonstrating that contraction, epithelialization, and scar formation of wounds are promoted by a decrease in pH of the wound medications. The ability of a dressing to control water loss can be determined by water vapor transmission rate. And this rate of water vapor transmission is an important parameter for wound dressing and it determines its ability to retain moisture. So according to studies carried out, an ideal wound dressing should be able to provide an optimum level of water vapor transmission depending on the wound condition and maintain an optimum level of moisture in the wound environment as it enhances the wound healing process. The water vapor transmission rates for all the three dressings ranged from 1801 gram per meter square per day to 1872 gram per meter square per day. So this indicated that all the dressings were permeable to water vapor. The study assessed the water vapor transmission over a 24 hour period, assuming that the films would be applied daily. And the results showed that all the dressings were permeable to water vapor and could maintain a moist environment on the wound site without causing desiccation. These are the results of the expansion profile of the dressings. When the dressing comes into contact with the moist wound surface, the exudates are absorbed into the dressing, causing it to hydrate, expand, and convert into a gel-like mass. So the expansion profile is an indication of the hydration rate of gelatin uh, of the dressings. The dressings were found to hydrate rapidly on the gelatin surface, expanding in all directions and eventually transformed into a gel. So all the three dressings expanded gradually up to 95, 85 and 94% of the initial sizes. Formulations containing higher concentrations of xanthan gum were found to have better expansion. So this property of a dressing was considered to be desirable for low to moderately exuding wounds. These are the results of the in vitro wound healing studies carried out by Scratch SA. So the results reveal that at the end of 24 hours of the study, there was increased wound closure rate and faster migration and formulation administered cells when compared to the control treated group. The three dressings were also con compared to a marketed formulation and the formulation treated groups showed better wound healing when compared to the control as well as the marketed formulation group. Hence, from the results of all the evaluation studies, we could conclude that nanocalcium oxide incorporated hydrocolloid dressings are a promising and dermatologically acceptable wound care system as the presence of nanocalcium oxide in the dressing contributes to its healing nature and the presence of micronized xanthan gum aids in faster absorption of exudate, promoting wound healing.
these are my references thank you for your patient listening